And then the zoo government thought that they can go free with all this. We can't permit them that. We must, we must hunt them. We must hunt them. It doesn't end even after our restoration. We must continue to hunt them. So this is it. And that's why we are here. We have to bear in mind that the genocide urge against us goes in line with our restoration. They are not separate. So this is it. It was true, however, because I have Abino bro brothers, Abino brothers, those that are fairly, you know, like that have the color of scarlet. Dare, you may not even uh, notice that they are maybe black in color, black skin, you know. They are the most affected with this lack of protein kwashoka. They were the most. They were very, very fragile to that. If those with dark skin lasted for six months, they have only two months before that. They, even their their belly was swollen, you know, explodes. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was how the zoo reduced our families. You can see it's a very terrible. Uh, So this, what is important, we have to bear in mind that this is not Photoshop. And that's the meaning of that exhibition we are talking about. It's very, very important. Here it is. Yeah, it is, it's terrible. You see, it's very, very human, very, very human. And then, though there will be a chapter for all of you, because I'm very, very proud of all of you to be sincere. This generation, you've done us great. God and history will never forget you. We always truly still to say that. But I don't fail to say it when I'm given the opportunity to say it. So it was a desperate situation. It was terrible, terrible. It was terrible to be said. So what happened is that it is important, please. I have something to say. In August 1968, till the end of the war in 1970, why I'm trying to hammer on this point is because for us to know that what we are doing, the exhibition, genocide, is very, very serious matter. There was what British government planned with Nigeria. Because while we are moving along with this exhibition, we must distinguish between British people and British government. Majority of British people were on our side. It's not anachronism the evidence that are there. It's only the British government policy that we are against us. So the world, the world reacted, saying what is going on? What has these innocent people done? They're only fighting for their survival. Why are you people treating them like this? British government couldn't support the pressure being led by the rest of the world. What did they do? They adopted what they, they plan what they call international military observer team. So here I refer it as British strategy. 
It was a maneuver campaign to distort genocide in Biafra. And the UK just, the government's justification for its support of the Nigerian government. How did they do this? They firstly launched a final offensive. They reduced us violently to nothing. Then organized this thing they duped international many tribes of our team. You can see that the observer team rendered no objective report as to whether or not genocide took place. It's important we take note of this. Then you can see I projected the images of the observers. You can see they are criminals. I went to the extent of hunting them, trying to know where they are now, who are they. I went to the extent to make a very deep, but what came out was that they were all secret agents, deadly secret agents, military secret agents hired by the British government to distort the genocide that was going on in Biafra. See all of them? They were three members. One is Colonel uh, Douglas Kens of Great Britain, Hugo Belunde of Sweden, Brigadier John Drewery of Canada. Trust, I tried to, you see that they were all criminals to do that dirty, dirty job. That's why I brought them up here. We have to bear that in mind also that it was part of the maneuver, you know, that are targeted against our people and that are still being targeted against us. We all are eyewitness how the Ohaneze Mwodo and the cohorts, so-called uh, South uh, East governors, how they collaborated with the Arewa area boys to do what they did, to declare that all war you know, against our people and our leader. So that's it. Uh, we move along. I don't want to dwell much on this uh, so-called international military observer because they were just fake. It was uh, something done to destroy future. Like, most of these informations we have today, remember the intent was to eliminate them from, uh, that's why in, 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 in the zoo, hardly you find a test. Remember the boom of test books on Biafra came up thanks to our leader, Nam De Khan. It was after him that we had the boom of test on this set. Uh, so it's important to know that too. So you can see humanity easily grabs the, the wrong in a picture of dying Biafran people. Beside British, USSR, Nigerian cocked up complex political maneuver on genocide crimes against Biafran people. Humanity easily understood that these people, there's a horrible agenda. And then they mobilize, mostly the humanitarian agencies. American Jewish emergency effort for Biafra relief was formed. Those of Canada, NGOs, I'm, I'm talking about Presbyterian Church of Canada and Oxfam, Canada. Those that brought the, uh, the, the, the um, what do you, uh, uh, relief, thank you, my brother. Those that brought the relief that uh, even maybe as I'm speaking to you today, was that little relief that uh, the few that survived that uh, helped us to survive, you know. Maybe after you will see, uh, it was remarkable. You will see, I'm coming to that image. Maybe when we, you see us today obsessed with the broker, that was, <laughs> it was that come of that too. Because at the time, the only food we were consuming is that the kids, they would come and give us a portion of football, a salted oporoko. Yes, stockfish. Because it was one of the uh, um, um, food, the food that can serve. It was uh, helpful more than even giving drug. 
because the people you are to give drug don't have anything. I mean, their metabolism doesn't function again. So uh, we have that their Cornish vague, a German church group provided also her. They were good in that too. There's need to mention that. So there's another point that we have to remember, which we have emphasized many a times. On 30th May 1967, the indigenous people of Biafra then tagged Eastern Nigeria through her consultative assembly, unanimously triggered her right to self-determination. It is a historical fact that Biafra, despite international complot, demonstrated to Africa and the whole world that there is no human rights more sacrosanct than that of self-determination. When all the other reasons for the survival of a human family had been threatened by an artificial political union. Remember who brought independence to the zoo was Biafran. We have to bear that in mind. So what am I trying to say? We created another history that when there was this tendency to eliminate us from the earth. Fortunately enough, after the League of Nations, that's committee of or well, the first form of committee of nations, the second was the United Nations. And one of the important articles, the article one, paragraph two of their charter, of United Nations Charter, which says to develop friendly relations among nations based on respect for the principle of equal rights and self-determination of people. This is Article 1, Paragraph 2 of United Nations Charter. As of this time, 1967, no nation in the world has ever triggered it. With a horrible and inhuman experience, and being led by a capable leader of such a rank of Odumego Juku, he triggered this article. He triggered it. And to the world, to them, they feel that Africans don't have such ability. Who are these Africans that? want to tell them that they have their right there. So that was one of the problems we had in our first republic. Because the colonial world or the imperialists as of that time, they couldn't believe it that an African nation can emerge and say that from today, I know my destiny, just what we usually say. Thank you. So the point there is that, as we can see, which country, the second country that triggered this article? The second country was Bangladesh. Bangladesh did has few months after our surrender, remember, we surrender because of the humanity merited against us. We can never, and we have never surrendered our sovereignty. And if we are here today, it's because we hold, our leader has taught us that our sovereignty is perennial. No one can take it away from us. So Bangladesh was the second, and uh, they were fortunate because the Asian countries, sorry, the Asian countries were more vigilant than those of Africans. They unanimously backed Bangladesh. 
and the United Nations had nothing to say than to Bangladesh is one of the recognized nations, but it's important we understand that they learned that from us. We had stumbling blocks because Eritrea, that is an independent nation today, was at that time pinching Emperor Heselese, who was the emperor of Ethiopia. So what they were saying is that as Biafra tend to set this wonderful example, many of those colonial stooge who pretended to be African leaders, and you have seen where history relegated them today, we are doing things that never favor the African people. And uh, we have to be proud of ourselves. We are their friends. So we must have to match up. Well, that it was a war fought by international humanitarian organizations. Maliciously, they say that. But what I intend saying is that thanks to them that few were able to survive. We have the Irish Catholic Holy Ghost Fathers, African Concern, International Committee of the Red Cross. We have the Red Cross, not church edge. There's a Protestant church from Denmark, Finland, Norway, Sweden. These people reacted against their government because they didn't understand what is going on. Why should they be killing human beings and kids? Not that you were attacking soldiers. Why? This, the agenda is clear. Later, we shall even see the reaction of Nelson, who later became the president of the United Nations. He made a public declaration on this. So our meeting in Germany since yesterday, this is one of the pivotal issues that we must go home with today. So we have a lot of them. Remember our, uh, I don't know, but pardon me if I make a mistake, our Jewish elder brothers, I don't know if we are the elder brothers or they are our elder brothers, but I remember our brothers, the Jewish people, they have what they call uh, um, um, the tree for good people of various nations. Yeah, we shall have ours at the appropriate time. I thank God that Dr. Kachi is very, very eloquent in so We shall have ours, three for good people of humanity. One or number. That's it. So that's it. We must have at the appropriate time. We can't forget these people, and we are seriously recording it. So you see one of them, something like uh, it's famous. Uh, when you see Medicine Center Frontier, something like Bernard Kushner, who later formed, uh, many of you have heard about MSF, Medicine Sans Frontier. The founder was Bernard Kushner. He was an ICR operator. He protested against the uh, Nigerian government that why are you not seeing the humanity being murdered against the Because of that, even he went to the stand of resigning and it was from the experience that, the terrible experience he had in Biafra that made him to have uh, the flu. what we have today, medicine sans frontier. So that's it. Uh, then another thing is that this is, as I said, that British people, we must have to distinguish that between British government policy and British people. This is a famous Osfam's public statements. Osfam is a British NGO that's international humanitarian organization. This was one of the, what you see there, it was a publicity that even they carried over the television, the media. What Britain must now face is that the price for a united Nigeria is likely to be millions of Biafra lives. This was a 1969 public statement made by Osfam. So not made by IPOB, but by Osfam. We have to bear that in mind. 
I remember they did they were they didn't hide eh? they were what you see here they were in Piccadilly Square they were in Piccadilly Square see it even in their postcard they didn't we didn't write it genocide this one must stop this were British people this were this was on December 24 1969 So you can see a genocide. We didn't write it here. But then why all these things were evident and clear? Remember the Nigerian government with her terrible stolen economic instrument. The objective is destruction. Destruction. The only person that they were unable to destroy is our leader Mazina and the Khan. And that's why we are here today. <laughs> so, where well, you can see, this was our, uh, you can even in Herod, this was a kind of uh, fundraising, you know, boss still in our, then, I mean, nude manner, you know. Well, however, this was a fund that built by Evening Standard to see how to assist us. So this were the, um, remember that for me again. Uh, relief, relief flights, you know. These are one of the relief flights, you know. Uh, so it was, uh, I just uh, included it in the image because many of them later were even abandoned at Venanda Pope up till now, you know, even there was a time someone was calling that if their friends can uh, come around and make that a monument to because uh, it's still lying in Benanda Po, you know, after we surrendered most of these things, you know. So they, this is a uh, Important to the Biafrans have gained a great deal of international sympathy by claiming that the federal government of Nigeria are bent on a policy of genocide. This sympathy throughout Europe and North America has led to widespread and most embarrassing criticism of Her Majesty, Her Majesty's government on policy. As I'm saying here, that we must be able to distinguish over Her Majesty's British government policy and then the British people. But what is clear is that there's an evidence to show that the British people were in our side, on our side. Because as you can see, immediately after the war, when even the Harold Wilson, I think is his name, the then British Prime Minister, he he sought for re-election and they didn't elect him. So but it's, it's symbolic, although the, his damages has been already, you know, uh, carried before that time. But we have to also put that in history. So, in particular, the government's defense of armed cells was criticized intensely inside and outside British Parliament. The Archbishop of Westminster and Canterbury called for a ban on arms supplies to Nigeria. In May 1968, the Church of Scotland Assembly unanimously called for the ends of arms sales to Nigeria. And one speaker claimed the arms supplies would link Britain's name in history with premeditated massacre. And they are hiding away from this. We must hunt them down. Of course, we must. The Guardian argued in July 1968 that stopping the arms is therefore the best way to save their funds from both slaughter and starvation. So thanks today that we are seeing this, we have to appreciate the media too. It was report of the press and photo reporters that we are able to have most of the images. Uh, and then uh, 
we may say that this tidal wave of journalistic interest was brilliantly delivered by the Biafran government and its public relations firm, the Mac Press. As of that time, the Biafran public relations firm was known as Mac Press. So they were carefully and humbly that they diffused all this information. And thanks to that, in various world national archive today, we can be able to have trust of most of these things that happen. Sometime I've overheard, I'm sorry for making reference to Dr. Tati because I know he's, he has a very, very, you know, great interest on these researches too, uh, relating most of the parliamentary, you know, sittings. As spoken British parliamentarians and the laws, they, they, they didn't keep silent. They questioned most of uh, the time, though we may say that is political, but still we have to record them. Something like on 11 June 1968 in the House of Commons, one MP asked the Foreign Secretary whether he was aware of the depth of feeling in the country that arms supplied to the Nigerian government should be cut off so that we should not be a party to the slaughter. They were avoiding genocide. But here, masking it to slaughter. Still, slaughter is genocide. You can't slaughter human beings. Still, Yeah. Another asked him to reconsider policy on this point particularly now when the dangers of massive slaughter appear to be broadly over the sea. A day later, an MP argued that it was, it has now become a war leading to possible extermination of arrests. This is not an IPOB statement. Another said that so long as we are sending arms, we are partly responsible for the bloodshed. So we can now start to have a clear picture of our exhibition that is an instrument to reveal a hidden truth. That's what we are doing. We have, this is British citizens, people like Carol that we have here today. As we can say, all of us, we know John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Because of Biafra, he made a very important jest, similar to that of Akanibian. We can't forget these people. We can't silence them. This is very, very important because it has never happened. This is called Remembrance Sunday in Whitehall is a kind of important annual remembrance that Britain normally, you know, does every year. In this case, this was on November 1969. They said that at the end of this year's too many silence, demonstrators shouted, remember Biafra. They were quickly taken away by the police because no, no other time such has happened around Buckingham Palace that maybe the royal family, Her Majesty's there. So it all took place only 50 feet from where the queen was standing near the cenotaph. So this is the Lucas of Gloucester, the king of there. So that's it. It's symbolic also. And then, as we can see, this is the American version. The American citizens were in silent. Here in August 18, 1968, the placards, as we have, all of us, we are familiar with that because we have done a very good job over that. Their own placards is ready. I mean, it rests. Don't let the lies go out on the children of Biafra. Apathy kills, which is what we are still suffering today. They are seeing the inhuman treat treatment that are being meted against us. They will wait till when we are deluded, denuded, denuded, and in such a very inhuman mood, maybe they may call you know, so apathy chaos. 
they know that, and then we must have to fight against this. So this was what the 1,000 demonstrators protested at 48th Street and Park Avenue in New York. So this is the present reality. And then this was a postcard that I made, Republic of Biafra, US support of Biafra is it, um, no, US support of Biafra exists, persists despite oddities. We, we demand more from United States as we demand more from Israel. But up to now, uh, we have not uh, uh, seen enough. But notwithstanding all these oddities, we still believe and I strongly, you know, hope that they will come in at the appropriate time. Maybe we are still doing our homework. So you can see here, it's important that I read out this. This was a statement made by Nelson. He called that statement, Call for American Action on Biafra by Richard Milhus Nelson. This was on the 9th of September, 1968. Let's listen to the statement. The terrible tragedy of the people of Biafra has now assumed catastrophic dimensions, but genocide is what is taking place right now. 